welcome to the Rediscovery channel. This is a channel where me and my partner Stilgar, uh, my name is Ivor Kovac, we each try to come up with a topic that the other person probably doesn't know about. So most of the items that we discuss are more obscure items from history. So uh, with that being said, it's my turn to try to surprise Stilgar. So actually this topic, uh, you might've actually heard about. There's a, there's a very real possibility that you already know something about this, but I didn't wanna ask you earlier in the week, you know, in case uh, you might not have known and then I would have ruined it. So to, to start off, uh, what do you know about uh, the Canary Islands? Oh, uh, I know my sister likes to go there on vacation. <laughs> So it's, uh, I think it's part of Spain, right? Yes. Um, and I think it's somewhere off the coast of Africa, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. That's about it. I guess it's in the Atlantic Ocean. Yes. Uh, so do you know, so we're, okay, so it's part of Spain. Do you mm -hmm. know who the original inhabitants were of the Canary Islands? Oh, no idea. Were they maybe Berbers or? That's a good guess. That's right. a good guess. Okay, so there were tribes living on these islands, and I believe that each island was dominated by a different tribe. The largest tribe was called the Guanche, um, and the, I guess plural you'd say Guanches. And right. they lived on the island called Tenerife, but uh, yep. today in colloquial speech, all of the native people are often referred to collectively as Guanches. So, um, the Guanches are related to Berbers. So, let's see. The Guanches were physically indistinguishable from Europeans, save for their, uh, their costume and their culture. Apart from that, when they were discovered, they were physically indistinguishable from Europeans. Genetically, however, they are most closely related to Berbers. And there's also mm. linguistic similarities between their language and uh, the Berber languages. So, so how many were there? Because uh, there's Tenerife, right? Uh, or Tenerife. Ten uh, over here we say Tenerife. What, what are the other? Is it Fuerteventura? Is that one of the islands as well? Possibly. Uh, you know, I actually didn't look that up. I was mainly focused on the cultural side. So... Okay, uh, so maybe, maybe you can tell me a little bit more about, because I, I don't think it's large, right? It's just, the, These are small islands. These are We're small islands, yes. Mm -hmm. So the interesting thing about these islands is they were not conquered by anybody until Spain came. So these are people that are, uh, you know, probably a good look at the original North African population, what it would have been like without interaction with Berbers or Romans. Okay, so uh, there was like no kind of uh, admixture in their gene pool. And there was no Christianity on the island, nor was there any Islam. They had their original uh, polytheistic gods. So let's see here. I have a few things. Um, the Guanches may or may not have had a written language because when Spain came in, they uh, smashed things up pretty badly. So there's some symbols and glyphs and things, I guess you would call them glyphs, that look like they might be a written language, but nobody knows how to interpret it, so we can't really be sure. Um, and these people actually, they mummified their dead, kind of like the Egyptians, and that's how we're able to get uh, genetic samples from the original population, because the current population is only about 30% of uh, the original DNA, um, the current population of the Canary Islands. So they used to mummify their dead in a similar fashion to the Egyptians. They had no metalworking of any sort. They, the clothes they wore were mostly animal skins, sometimes uh, hairy, like uh, goat, you know, goat skins with all the hair still on it. Mm -hmm. They did make pottery, and they made jewelry out of wood, shells, or stone. And uh, their weapons, they would use um, 
obsidian blades inserted into wood, kind of like how the Aztecs used to do. And the, the Guanches, they mostly lived in caves, like that was their preferred method of living. Uh, if, they, if they couldn't find a cave or dig one, then they would live out in huts, but they would put like a wall, some kind of fortification going around. And there's, um, there's also pyramids there, crude pyramids. And I, I read a few different uh, sources about the pyramids, and there's some disagreement over whether or not the Guanches actually built them. There are some people that say no. Uh, they were built by like the Masons after Spain came and took over. But my thinking is, you know, Spain was literate, and they came in and took over in the 15th century. So if they had built those things, um, there probably would have been some record of it, right? Like it wouldn't have been a matter that you could even debate or speculate about. And the, um, so I, my theory, I, I believe that the Guanches built it. And, you know, there's some people that think that the Guanches were like Stone Age barbarians. But actually, uh, my thinking is no, because there's no metal on the islands, right? So whenever they came, like if they're, they're originally some kind of Berber tribe, and the Berbers had civilization even before they were conquered by the Romans. So these guys, if they have written language, and they have social hierarchy, and they have um, uh, social, yeah, social stratification, written language, sedentary lifestyle, food surplus, then that's all the qualifications of civilization right there. And it looks like they did have a written language. So my, my thinking is that they came to these islands, and they couldn't find any metal at all. So they worked with the materials that were available to them. And you contrast that with like uh, the Aztecs and the other kind of Amerindian civilizations that Spain conquered. Those people didn't use metal tools, but they did make jewelry out of gold. So they, so, you know, anybody that says that like, oh, the Aztecs, they didn't have metalworking or the Incas, they didn't have. That's not true. They did have. But they just worked gold and decorative stuff. They never made uh, weapons out of metal for whatever reason. But these guanches, it looks like they just didn't have any metal at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they were coming from Egypt, for example, they would have probably at least some, at least, you know, bronze technology or something. But if there's no bronze available, then what do you do, right? And yeah. I, I guess they weren't actively interacting with other people or other tribes and that's how they uh, i wonder when did the when did the spanish uh, arrive there well um i've the, got that so the spanish they stumbled across them in 1402 and that's when they started to take over like the first tribes they just like the first tribes were having a food shortage i guess their population was growing uh, more than the land could support so they just straight up surrendered to the Spanish. And then the conquest, so they started in 1402, but they didn't finish until 1496. And the guy that finally conquered them, his name was Alonso Fernando de Lugo. And after he defeated the Guanches, he became the governor of the islands. And he was very abusive towards them and he sold a lot of them into slavery. And, uh, you know, they never, they never returned home. Like, they treated them as, uh, as inferiors. And, yeah. like, the studies of the current... what the Spanish did in, like, with the Aztecs as well, right? They were in South America, Middle America. They had very little respect for uh, local communities. Yeah, general. they had, they had very little respect for the Amerindian cultures. They actually viewed them as subhuman. And uh, there's actually a, um, the Catholic Church, I don't know who the Pope was, but they had to a, a make an official decree that these people are humans and you can't do this. Uh, but they would, like with the Amerindian cultures, they already had like a, a fairly complex civilization and a good agricultural base. They were uh, more advanced than the Guanches. And so the Spanish 
they didn't sell for the well i i don't want to make an absolute statement but basically they put them under the system called the encomienda system which was slavery and all but you know title kind of like a and and they just use like them as the work Russia. Kind of like serfs, yeah. They they just made them into the workforce. The guanches, it looks like they actually sold them off the island to other places. And you know, coming to the genetic side of it, there's um, like the current gene pool. You know, you have you have Y DNA that's with your Y chromosome that changes very slowly, and that comes just from the the father. And you have mitochondrial DNA which also doesn't change, and that comes only from the mother. Like, there's no recombination when you reproduce, right? You just get the Y from your father, it's just like his. The M from your mother, it's just like hers. So what they found with the current population of the Canary Islands is that uh, there's a much higher percentage of M DNA, mitochondrial DNA, from the original population. And then there's a lot less of the, of the Y DNA from the original population. And we know we have genetic samples from the original population because of the, mu- the mummies. So what it looks like is less of, is less of the women were deported. Like the women, um, they got by, I guess, by marrying the Spanish conquerors, the overlords, mm-hmm. whereas the men were killed at a higher rate and deported, you know, I mean, that's, a, that's actually a common survival strategy that women will do when they're conquered. Kind of like when uh, France was conquered by the Nazis, you had all sorts of women trying to get with the German soldiers. Well, and so, oftentimes, uh, after a war, the men would be executed. And, uh, and that's, I mean, that happened throughout history. And then the women would be uh, sold into slavery. But that would mean that their genetic material would survive um so because oftentimes it would be sold into slavery but you know they might end up becoming a sex slave or the property of a man or even becoming freed and then becoming you know marrying so yeah and they became uh, they became wives and one thing i know about spanish colonization is they usually wouldn't send women to the colonies they, yeah. So the, the guys that would be going, they'd be like soldiers and prospectors and things like that. And uh, they would take their wives where they could. And, um, you know, that's that's the reason why the the countries to the south of us are uh, are different, you know, they from ours. Because they didn't send over like whole families, like the English would send over whole families. But... Um, yeah, I, I thought that was kind of interesting. interesting. Not, never, never heard of them, and I imagine that because they still had their own uh, religion, I guess, or you know, um, that they were just completely isolated. Um, I wonder yep. if that was by choice, or if they uh, they just kind of lost their ability to travel. Because if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> the Canary Islands are pretty far out into the ocean. And it looked tiny on a map. Um, so either they got there and they didn't know how to get back, or they they decided to remain, you know, isolated from the rest of the world. And and I guess that worked for quite some time because that's interesting that the Spaniards got there, and that's like what did you say the 14th or 1402 15th? is when the Spain found them. So that's like um, what that's. 400 500 years after the the muslim conquest of all of northern africa and spain um they, and i guess nobody noticed them nobody knew they were there that and there was no presence of christianity either yeah so that means those people were there before christianity would have even reached like uh the maghreb the berber zone but yeah i think probably they I think probably they were there, you know, even before Christ. I think they were a part of the ancient migrations of Berbers, you know, and the fact that they would mummify their dead, kind of like the Egyptians. Um, they they probably are North African origins for sure, certainly, and um, they probably were a more advanced civilization when they came there, and maybe the reason that they didn't leave or make contact with others is because. 
you know, like let's say they were a Bronze Age civilization to begin with. Well, eventually that bronze, the bronze uh, materials are going to rust. And then what do you have? Stone, wood. So they wouldn't have had the capability to go back. But I imagine if they did go back, they probably would have just reassimilated into uh, one of the Berber tribes and you wouldn't even hear about it. Yeah. But yeah. It, what, yeah. what's weird is why does it take Spain over 90 years to conquer these guys? Yeah, and, and uh, <laughs> that is really interesting because they were, they were quite, you know, well adapted at conquering um, countries. Um, it's kind of so, an embarrassment, uh, so, right? When, did the, when was the Reconquista done for? Do you happen to know? Uh, let's see. That was after the marriage of Fernando and Isabel shortly before, uh, let's see. Fernando, this is embarrassing. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually looking it up like a noob. I know I, I it's shortly before well, Christopher Columbus, right? Historians. That's why it, I mean, we're, that's the thing. Yeah, in that's 1492, what's the saying? In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and okay. he was doing that for Fernando and Isabel. Yeah, so I think uh, maybe that uh, they were actually still struggling with uh, the Reconquista when this was going on. Um, but you think about it, like they took down the Aztecs much faster. And these people are just islanders with wooden and stone weapons and no armor of any kind. They're wearing mm -hmm. animal skins. And actually, the dude, um, the dude that w that became the governor, uh, Alonzo, he the first expedition he made to take down the Guanches, most of his army got massacred, and he had to retreat. And then he went back and like he begged for uh, you know help for a second chance, and they gave it to him. They said, "Okay, buddy, go go try again." And after that, he kind of poured his wrath out upon them, was very brutal towards them, you know, torture, killing, slavery, mass murder, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I was yeah. right. 1492 is when uh, the kingdom of Granada was conquered. Um, that's what it says here, 1492. So kingdom of Granada was like the last Muslim holdout in Spain, which, by the way, I visited. Um, and after that, that's when they started to look outward and they hired, uh, Christopher Columbus. So yeah, they got started on, uh, conquering the Canaries before they were done, uh, freeing their homeland. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And that's probably, maybe that's one of the reasons it took them so long simply because they, uh, they didn't have, uh, the resources. Yeah. It's probably a low priority to, uh, take over the Canaries. Um, and you know what? And I find this this is like I thought it was way out into the ocean. Um, it's actually not that far off the coast of Morocco, the Canary Islands. So the Morocco, the so Fuerteventura is actually one of them. It's like my family has been to Fuerteventura several times. Um, and um, so you have Tenerife and Gran Canaria. Um, I think those are the main ones. There's a couple smaller ones, but it's like. It's really close to the Western Sahara. Like it's that's interesting. That's that they remained isolated. It, it's bigger than I thought it would be. Um, but yeah, crazy. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's so. It maybe that's why it took them longer. Um, would love to. Maybe I should. I need to go visit it at some point. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, is there could, is it you, any anything left? Like any ancient forts, fortifications, or things like that? Yeah, the pyramids are still there, the stone pyramids. 
and uh, some of the artifacts and mummies are preserved in museums. And there's also, actually, their pyramids look more like, they look more like, uh, they're like stepped pyramids. They're not uh, smooth like the Egyptian pyramids, and they're smaller and cruder with just like rocks put together. Um, but, you know, they are, a, they are related to the Egyptians remotely, I guess. Like, they're more closely related to the Berbers, so it would make sense um, that you would see some kind of cultural resemblance that was there. You know, and it's and you would think that back then, the that uh, the Spanish wouldn't have been so brutal to them. Like that, that was what I was actually a bit surprised about because I, when I saw the Guanches, I was like, okay, they look just like Europeans. You know, like there was a there was like some racial stuff going on um, in the New World, certainly, but apparently they were just they didn't care. Like uh, they're like, well, these people are a different culture. So we're just going to jack them up. And also, they probably viewed them as an inferior culture because they were less developed technologically. And uh, they were polytheists. So they probably, uh, one of the things that I read is that, and, and this was probably just somebody's opinion, but supposedly they kind of saw them as like the Moors, like uh, people that don't deserve the same level of consideration because they're, um, uh, they're outside, you know, they're alien. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, that's, that's how you can remember the, okay. So that, that stupid rhyme in 1942, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. That's, you know, he was sponsored by Fernando and Isabel and they were the ones that finally got rid of the Moors. So after that, they had some money to spend on exploration all right and they hired christopher columbus yeah interesting yeah yeah man um maybe at some point uh you can look into uh it's i think it's called the azure azure islands um like santa cruz the graciosa um so anyways I, I think that's actually a town on the map i'm looking at the map here because there are more islands uh, but I think a lot of them were taken by Portugal. Um, and they're like in the middle of the Atlantic. Like um, if you if you take like uh, Lisbon and you go left, like, you know, and then it's just like right there in the northern Atlantic. But, it, but also between the Canary Islands and those islands, there's more islands that are like sort of in between that belong to Portugal uh, as well. Maybe maybe I need to look into this, or maybe we can put this in the comments. But if there were any settlers there as well, or if the culture was just on these these islands, um, there were some islands that Spain colonized in the Atlantic that were completely empty. There was nobody there. Mm. I don't know if that's the same thing, but I remember reading about that elsewhere. Is like they used some of those islands as a uh, jumping off point to south america yeah um but uh yeah the, the those people the guanches and those other tribes they only exist on the canary islands and then the people that are the closest to them would be like the berbers of north africa people that live in the atlas mountains the the cable kabilia of uh what's that country called algeria those kind of people um, oh, interesting. It and is interesting. You know, like when I found well. out about the Guanches, I was like, "What?" You know, is it, you know, it's interesting. It's a glimpse into the very ancient world. Is how I see it. The very. And if they're related to Berbers, uh, they were actually renowned for their fighting prowess. So, um, anyway, that's uh, it's another story altogether. But when they were conquered uh, by Islam and they were freshly converted. It was mostly the Berber warriors that uh, led the conquest of Spain, for example. Um, yeah. They were ferocious in battle. They, they had, like, no match. Um, and they actually, at one point, there was a Berber uprising uh, within the caliphate that um, basically they took over, like, northern Africa, and then the Arabs never got it back, pretty much. So, who um. knows? Maybe that's in their DNA a little bit, the fighting, that DNA. No. You know, it might also be 
that um, when the Spanish found these people, they might have unconsciously kind of sensed their or, or come to the conclusion somehow that they were related to Berbers, even though they didn't have like the DNA testing back then to prove it. But if they kind of sensed that, then that could be another reason why they were so merciless to these people. They might have been like, this is payback for yeah, ransacking our home. Yeah, yeah, who knows? So like, yeah. now it's our turn. You guys are going to pay. I think, I think the Spanish were ruthless in, in, in general, but it's yeah, they were. probably also because they were living under uh, Muslim occupation for hundreds of years. Um, and uh, that wasn't always uh, pretty uh, common to uh, what uh, some people tend to say, even scholars. <laughs> Uh, where it's some kind of um, paradise there with tolerance and everything, and, and actually nothing could be farther from the truth. But, yeah, um, that's right. Well, that, and that's another thought that I had is while the Muslims were there, you know, they they treated the Spanish people as second class citizens. I mean, it wasn't as bad as like, you know, what happened to the Coptic people of Egypt, for example. But it was still pretty bad. You know, like the closest thing that an American might relate it to would be like Jim Crow, like how black people were treated during segregation. So the- I, they, I think it was, I don't know, like, because they even had entire, they had massacres, like cities that would resist would be completely wiped out, women sold into slavery, sex slavery, etc. So anyway, that's a, that's a whole different topic um, altogether. So maybe we should keep that one for uh, for our next episode. Yeah, let's keep that for another episode. But that's what I'm thinking is that after having been second class citizens for so long, yeah, that could have hardened them and it could have also given them ideas because then they turn around and do the same thing to everybody else that they conquer. Like you're a second class citizen. And then they also you have the race component. And this could be like a whole nother video to itself. Like they made a big chart back in the... 1700s i think it was of all the different types of admixture and like in in the new world for example um they had a hierarchy based on your your pedigree and the best thing you could be is a an actual a spanish man from spain born in spain you're at the top of the hierarchy they call you a yeah. peninsulares peninsular mm -hmm. and then if you're even if you're like a hundred percent white but you're born in like Mexico, oh, well, automatically you're down one rung. And then if you're mixed with this or that, you're down another and another and another. So yeah, they, I guess they had like second and third class citizens, you know, it's like, I think if I, if I had to be, uh, I, I still don't think Spain was as bad as like the Assyrians though. Yeah, uh, it's hard to say, like you, you can't also say like, oh, it was Spain. And, and like what you said, the Catholic church did try to, hold them back and say, well, you can't do people things like that. But there was just this gold rush and, um, and they were, you know, they were really ruthless in, in many ways. Yep. Um, I'd love to look into that. That's also an interesting topic. Uh, what I know is actually, um, um, from a book I read. So, you know, like it's from Simone de Beauvoir. So she is actually, one of the people coming out of the enlightenment and she wrote a book like all people are mortals and mm -hmm. she talks a little bit about this um somebody that is immortal and uh, he talks about all the misery he's seen including when he goes to southern uh south america and and he he you know she describes how these people are treated like and it's disgusting uh, there's no but, for it. yeah it's it's disgusting but to be fair those Amerindian cultures in South America were actually more brutal than Spain. Like, uh, yeah, you know, but it, was on, a, off it was on a different scale, right? Um, like, I don't know. Like, and, and still, like, regardless, I think if you're, like, if you're, if you're part of, like, you know, you have Catholicism on your banner, um, you they should have known better. But I think a lot of people that went there. Um, they didn't care about that. All they cared about was uh, was gold and greed, and um, and they and yeah. Anyway, 
Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, it wasn't really a thought. Like for them, I think for most of these guys, the religion was more of a cultural identity rather than a, a deeply felt like uh, personal belief, you know? So they would say, yeah, it's interesting. But they also conquered uh, your country too for a while. But yeah. they didn't yeah, treat yeah, you guys. Yeah, to torture people here as well. Oh, they well. did that there too? Yeah. Uh, the Reformation as well. And that, that, that actually talking about, you know, I want to talk more about like myths and how we use history to build identities and things like that. Uh, but actually the 80 year war with the Spanish empire plays a huge role in the identity of, um, of, of the Netherlands. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of that too between the, the Catholics and the, the reformed. Yeah. yeah, they were pretty, uh, I mean, I guess they were, they really did kind of borrow from. Uh, they really did kind of borrow some inspiration from the caliphate. <laughs> yeah, I actually have some uh, some some stories there as well about what <laughs> what was done there to uh, really strike terror into the hearts of the the Visigoth um, uh, Christian kingdoms in in Spain, and um, and it was something you can really only compare. Uh, to maybe what you see happening in uh, or what you saw happening in, in Syria and Iraq recently with ISIS. So, um, yeah, anyway. But um, but then again, like, that's not like it, it goes back to the Assyrians. It goes there. There's a lot of that there. But I guess some peoples that have gone through really bad hardships, I don't think it excuses it. But uh, violence begets violence, right? Isn't that what they say? Yeah, I don't care for, um, you know, I, I don't care for a lot of the kind of things that have happened, like uh, conquering other groups and making them to second class citizens. I don't care for slavery. I don't care for race ideologies. You know, all these things are uh, perennial problems that keep coming up again and again and again. And this is this is one reason why I've for like almost my entire life. I've been really uh, adamant about space program. Like, if we, you know, anyway, that's. Uh, but like, if we can, uh, if all, we can't get along, then all different we should... topic. And and I agree with you. I agree with you 100. percent It would be great. And by by the way, I, I had to think like uh, about um, your your story about the uh, Assyrians um, and uh, some of the punishments they uh, um, they they put out. Um, I just recently read about a punishment of the Persians, which were seen as much more uh, peaceful compared, you know, much more reasonable compared to the uh, Assyrians. And it, um, anyway, the punishment, it was like for betrayal and some other things. It was uh, called boating. Have you ever heard of boating? I, yeah, I actually did hear about it from uh, somebody on DeviantArt. She okay. drew this picture of this like Persian noblewoman and wrote this crazy story underneath, and I I I, I kind of was like, okay, this is deviant art. I, I can't believe the Persians would do something like this. No, it's, they put, it's true. It's true. So they basically took two canoes and put them together, and then they put somebody in the middle of it, and they cut out like parts for the hands, uh, the feet, and then for the mouth. And then they would feed this person, uh, force feed this person milk and honey as much as they can. And then put also milk and honey all over the hand and feet. And then put them out like somewhere out like in a swamp or something. And, um, and because of this, uh, there would be all these bugs coming after them. And, and because of the milk and honey, they would get diarrhea. Um, yeah. And then they would go and actually the, the bugs would like crawl into their bodies and basically eat them from the inside out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that's yeah. the problem I have with these kind of horrific punishments is yeah. how many people get these punishments that didn't actually do anything, but like they're being punished because they're accused. Yeah, w w one person that I saw that got it was he was ordered because there were a lot of um, fights among the Persian royals and um, apparently he was told by uh, one of them to kill his rival. And he did, and then he boasted about doing it, which he shouldn't have done. And that pissed this other guy off that gave him the assignment to kill this, this other guy. And, and that's why he, 
that's why he received the punishment. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. Seems horrible there, but there is a lot of. Um, I think that's a topic altogether, different altogether. Maybe we can do one of those one time, and uh, maybe somebody can let us know if the comments if they want to hear like the most horrible uh, deaths, like <laughs> you know, throughout like. <laughs> There, there are some really interesting ones. Like the Chinese have some really interesting ones. Maybe we can do an episode about those. So oh, let yeah, us know in if you yeah. wanna, if you want us to go into some of these gruesome details. So yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's good. I think uh, we've already kind of gone way past the guanches. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, the guanches are uh, long dead now. So no, no. <laughs> okay, actually, one last thing about the guanches. Yeah, and then I'm gonna terminate mm-hmm. this video. Like the. There's the people there that still uh, self-identify as guanches, and I'll put some pictures that's in the slideshow. They still like dress up in the ancestral gear for ceremonies and celebrations and things like that. Yeah. And there's some some whistling language that is still in use on one of the islands. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, if you can put that in there, and uh, that's cool. No, I, I actually think it's a really cool culture. It sounds super interesting um yeah if, if we could find anything about why they remained isolated if that was by choice because um or not i mean that to me is fascinating as well like either you get sh- re- you like shipwrecked there and you, you don't know how to get out or you just choose to remain you know like it's like oh let's not talk to anybody else and do our own thing i think you know they uh, might oh, have been it's... part of a if you think about it they could have been part of a much larger expedition. Imagine, though, the boats in the ancient times, like the boats they must have gotten into. Some people yeah. are like, all right, we haven't seen an island forever and our food's running out, so we're going to settle here. And then some other people are like, I don't know, it looks kind of small. I think we're going to keep on going. And then those people that keep on going never make it anywhere. What if they were on an expedition to find a new world? And yeah, um, I mean, if, they got shipwrecked in the Atlantic. The Atlantic Ocean is pretty brutal, man. They got a yeah. storm and they, uh, you know, they got sent out. And then, uh, you know, 100 years later, the Spaniards do it instead. Yeah. And actually, uh, one thing I heard about Christopher Columbus, I don't know if it's true or not, that he actually miscalculated the actual uh, diameter of the Earth and that he was just lucky that the New World was here. Because if it wasn't, he would have run out of supplies before he reached India or China. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So Pfizer. I think. Yeah, man. Think, good, good story, and actually, really cool, uh, cool um, culture. Sounds really cool, and also the whistling language, and that they try to keep it alive. Hope I can get to visit it someday. Um, visit those um, pyramids. Um, cool, man. This is yeah. awesome. Yeah. So hey, if there are any comments, um, also like um, what Ivor has said in the past, if you were still starting with this, if you have any cool ideas, uh, drop them in the comments below. Um, and we, you know, we're we're just starting out, so we're looking for for cool stuff out there. So let us know, and uh, we'll we'll likely run with it and uh, do some research on your behalf. Yeah, um, and yeah. You probably expect us to ramble a- about it too, like we've been doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so if we should ramble less then also let us know um but yeah yeah if we should I, ramble I <laughs> sorry otherwise we'll keep doing it yeah probably and not but, care well, uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> space aliens and i don't know what and, and uh yeah anyway who knows where we'll go but yeah man cool cool story really appreciate it and I look forward to the next uh, video in the next episode.